Hello guys. Hi guys. Just a quick little thing um, before this video starts. This is actually supposed to be up on October 29th, but because of the videos that got, got corrupted, this was one of them. So it took me a while to get um, Frozen's footage of him recording this. So thank you, nerd, for recording for me. Um, this has taken me a little bit longer because I wanted to make sure that I got it right. So, thank you so much for recording this for me, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Honestly, uh, Frozen's voice is perfect, so yeah, enjoy. Again, I'm sorry this is so late, it was supposed to be up like almost a week and a half ago, but it was one of the videos that got corrupted. But with that said, enjoy Frozen reading you Tommy, I think it's the name of the- I, I think it's- my name is Tommy and the perfect girl. Hello. And welcome to a reading by Frozen Void. Myers didn't want me to read this story, read a story for her, and I decided I'll read this one. It's a, it's a bit of a long one. I just uh, skipped over everything. Sorry, I got the, I guess I got the wait. Just start over. Okay, no, my fault. But yeah, it, the story I'll be reading is my name is Tommy. It's a supposedly scary story so yeah and something I should point out my pronunciation skills or whatever is not that good so I'm probably go I'm almost certainly going to mispronounce something but anyways let's get started my name is Tommy is a short scary story about a young boy who comes home from school one day and notices something strange about his family. My name is Tommy and I think I might be going insane. I grew up in a normal class in a normal middle class home with loving parents and a sweet little sister. Everything seemed fine until one day when something very strange happened. I came home from school and when I walked into the living room I saw something that disturbed me. My mother and father were sitting on the couch, smiling at the TV. The weird thing was that the TV wasn't on. Yet they were, yet they were staring at it intently. They both turned their head at me. They both turned to look at me and simultaneously said, Hello, Timmy. My heart leaped into my throat. Up into my throat. My name is Tommy. How could my own parents make a mistake like that? Is everything okay? I asked nervously. Let me read that again. Is everything okay? I asked nervously. Everything is perfect, Timmy, my father replied. They were both smiling from ear to ear. It was creepy. I decided to go upstairs to talk to my little sister. When I walked into her room, she was lying on the bed, staring at the ceiling. Have you noticed anything strange about mom and dad? I asked. She smiled at me and said, No, Timmy. Mom and dad are just fine. They're just perfect. My blood suddenly ran cold. My name is Tommy. Without another word, I backed out of the room. She was still smiling at me as I closed the door. I had no idea what to do. I couldn't shake the sneaky suspicion, or, sorry, I can't pronounce that well. I think I spelled it right, pronounced right. Huh? I couldn't shake the sneaky suspicion, suspicion, hold up a second. I couldn't sneak the sneaky suspicion that there was something wrong with my entire family. I went into my bedroom and tried to think. I heard my mom coming up the stairs. She went into her bedroom and closed the door. I decided to spy on her, so I went into the hallway and peeked through her keyhole. What I saw terrified me. My mom was changing clothes. She was standing with her back to me, and I immediately noticed something very shocking. Her skin was very pale, and there was a zipper that ran all the way down her back. Whatever she, whatever she was, she wasn't my mom. That's when the panic set in. I ran down the stairs and ran and out the front door. 
As I was dashing down the driveway, I looked back and saw my father at the front door. He was on all fours, growling like an animal, howling and chasing after me, like a raging demon. Since then, I've been all I've been on the run. All I can do is keep removing. Now that I know their secret, they can't afford to let me live. I keep moving from place to place, begging on the street for a spare change. I tried to go to the police, but they wouldn't believe me. They said I was a runaway and tried to bring me back to my parents. I just narrowly managed to escape. I tried to go to the media, but every reporter I spoke to just laughed in my face. I'm tired of running. I'm pretty sure they killed my real family. My only reason for living now is to get revenge. Can anyone help me? My name is Timmy. And that was the story of a boy named Tommy. Thank you for listening. I didn't really plan on reading this, but I thought, you know, I'll read it anyways. This is what I was attending, what I was originally asked to read by Maya herself. And I decided I wasn't going to do it because it was pretty long. But it'll be fine. We'll get through it. So anyways, the name of the story is The Perfect Girl. The Perfect Girl is a creepy story about a boy who falls in love with the girl who lives next door. So without further ado, let's get started. One summer, a girl moved into the house next door. She lived with her mother and they were quite poor. Her father had abandoned them years before. She was new in town and found it hard to adjust. Although we both came, came from different backgrounds, she and I got to be friends. We were not very close friends, but I often visited her house and we would talk. The moment I laid eyes on her, I knew she was the perfect girl for me. Unfortunately, she didn't feel the same way. She was attracted to boys who were handsome and confident. I was clear it was clear that I wasn't her type, so I decided to wait. She didn't have any friends of her own to talk to, so she conf uh conf yeah, so she I can't pronounce that in me. Mostly, she would complain about her life. She, mostly, she would complain about her life, telling me how her mother hit her, how the girls in her class were mean and excluded her. She also told me about a boy she had a crush on. He was very popular with the girls in school. And she talked about her problems. I, as she talked about her problems, I just sat there and listened. Strength and tradition, pride, yes. One day, the girl stopped coming to school. As it turned out, it was because she was being bullied. She told me that one of the popular girls in school had found out that she had a crush on her boyfriend. The popular girl and her friends would bully her every time they saw her. She said they even spread she they even spread vile rumors about her to the other classmates, and they were making her life a living nightmare. I just kept. I just kept quiet and listened as she vented her problems. Her behavior began to change after she jumped, entered junior high school. She stayed out until she stayed out until all hours of the night and began to smoke cigarettes and drink alcohol. I heard rumors that she was doing drugs too. She fell in she fell in with a bad crowd and was even arrested by the police once. 
her home life grew even worse and she would frequently quill with her mother in the middle of the night all of the girls in the school hated her some sprayed graffiti all over her house calling her horrible names and saying disgusting things about her someone even killed her pet cat and stuffed it through through her letterbox eventually the girl dropped out of high school she became withdrawn and locked herself in her bedroom she stopped speaking to her mother and went for days without leaving her room she rarely came out even to eat she looked pale sickly and painfully thin her mother took to leaving food outside her door she would only come out when she needed to use the toilet or in the middle of the night when her mother was asleep it was a miserable life i went to see her for the first time in a long time she refused to come out to see me and even though i yelled through the keyhole she refused to answer her mother gave me a bowl of soup to take upstairs to her I caught a glimpse of her when she opened the door to take it. She was pale, drawn, haggard, and immaculated. She looked like a red rag that had been worn out. I went so I went to see her every day. After a while, the girl began talking to me through the door. She told me how she was constantly fighting with her mother, and all of her friends had forgotten about her. She told she told me how she had fallen in low how she had fallen in a bad crowd and went out with them at night, stealing, doing drugs, and getting into trouble. She told me she was caught shoplifting by the police and she had a criminal record. She told me her mother tried to help her at first, but when she wouldn't listen, her mother flew into a rage and beat her. Her life had become unbearable. She wanted to die, and she told me she had tried to commit suicide many times by slitting her wrists. Just like the old days, she continued to talk on and on, and I just listened. Whenever I, she asked for my opinion, I just shrugged and made some incuous remark as time went by the girl's mood gradually began to brighten she went she even decided to come out of her room it seemed like things were getting better and the future was looking positive her murder broke down in tears and thanked me profusely one day the girl went up to the roof of the of an apartment building in the neighborhood and jumped off the building wasn't very high and she landed in a in the shepherd i can't pronounce that that was probably what saved her life however her spinal cord was injured in the fall and she had she was paralyzed from the neck down the doctor said she would spend the rest of her life in a wheelchair when she got out the hospital i went to see her she was, lay she was lying in her bed, unable to move. She apologized to me over and over, and she couldn't stop crying. She, she said she wished she didn't survive the fall and told me she was sorry for all the trouble she had caused me and her mother. I tried to soothe, in, I tried to soothe her and stop her crying, but it's hard to comfort someone when they are laying down. I embraced her awkwardly. She was weeping so much that her whole body was shaking. She couldn't even wipe away her own tears. As I held her in my ar in her arms, I guess as I held her in my arms, she I asked her to marry me. She she was like, "Really? Are you serious? Me? Really?" She couldn't believe that anyone in the world, anyone would want her. I had to propose to her several times before she would believe it. I really meant it. She cried so hard, her tears ran dry. I tried to reassure her and told her I wanted to marry her. 
was because I tried to reassure her and told her I wanted to marry her because I had always loved her. She was a perfect girl for me. She always had been, even when she ignored me and didn't return my feelings. Even when she was hanging out with the bad crowd, even when I had to, to listen to all her stupid problems, even when she became so thin and was hiding in her room, even when I told the popular girl she fancied her boyfriend, even when I was spreading vile rumors about her to her classmates, even when I sprayed graffiti all over her house, even when I killed her cat and put it through the letterbox of her house. Even now that she is lying in her in her bed, small, weak, and unable to move. Even now I still love her. You see, she is a perfect girl for me. Soon we will be married. And that was it. In my opinion, kind of a effed up story, not gonna lie. But anyways, thank you for listening. It's been Frozen, and I'm out.